I am responding to Andre's claim, which was the result of further human or the result of further human overpopulation will result in decreased decreased food security. Andre has uh, three claims. Uh, one is the growth in the human population occurred because people have been exposed to better nutrition and sanitation, which in turn decreases the outbreak of disease and sickness. Uh, with population growth, his second claim is with population growing exponentially, food security becomes more of a concern as well as the chance of famine. His last one is consequences of decreased food security, which includes food uh, scarcity will cause sickness and disease. Uh, so responding to his first claim, um, I have the evidence uh, that my opponent used was the fact that the world's population is growing exponentially. My opponent gives the numbers that in 1900 to 1950, the population had grown from 1.6 to 2.5. Then in a matter of 65 years, the population had grown to 7.2 billion. My opponent lastly states that according to the research done by the United Nations, the world population will grow to 9.2 billion by 2050. Though these numbers are correct, they don't fully provide solid evidence on why the result of further human overpopulation Will result in food uh, will result in decreased food security. First, I'd like to point out uh, that what first I'd like to point out that what would be the difference between then and now? There are hugely there are hugely significant rise in the population between the years 1950 and 2015, 4.7 uh, billion to be exact, which is more than half what is projected by 20 uh, by 2050, which is 2 billion. My claim is that if, if we did it before, why can't we do it again, especially now with our advances in technology? Uh, my second claim, or no, sorry, I'm still on that one. Uh, to my opponent's reasoning is yes, better nutrition and sanitation, as well as medical improvements, have been proven to cause the increased population, but that's not all. My opponent left out other important key factors that cause the, that cause the fast increase of population. According to Car uh, Caroline Kinder, who's a member of the Yale New Haven Teachers Institute, says another key reason is the vast amount of food that has been being produced, as well as the growing uh, food production. Uh, and this means pretty much the you know how they able to get food from point to point B all around the country. Uh, she states that both these were, both these play dire roles in why population has continued to grow to the numbers we see today. I'm simply saying once again, we have proven in the past that we can do it, and now with all our advances and the addition of even more increased population. Now, with our, all our advances, the addition of an even more increased population will have no effect on the future uh, and our food resources. Uh, the second claim uh, that he stated, with, which is the, uh, with the population growing exponentially, food security becomes more of a concern as well as a chance of famine. Uh, my opponent brings up two examples of the famine, which include the Irish potato blight in the mid-1800s mid and the famine that struck China 50 years ago. Both these examples are good uh, for describing the effects of famine, but do not help explain that result further, um, further human overpopulation will result in decreased food security. I also would like to add, uh, while fact checking my opponent's numbers, I found, the, I found three credible uh, different websites and articles uh, that uh, state the total number of deaths due to famine in Ireland were actually closer to 1.5 to 2 million than 3 million, like he stated. My opponent who brought the examples of famine in Ireland and China may give good visuals of famine, but do not, uh, but do still do not back up the result of few, uh, further human population will result in decreased food security. Take the Irish potato uh, blight of the mid 1800s, for example. This historical incident had nothing to do with overpopulation, but instead bad planning on the Irish standpoint. Blight, uh, blight had attacked the number one cash crop uh, food by the Irish. Um, History.com states that the potato. Um, History.com states that the potato, because of the sole substance food for one third of the country, this, this was not a result of overpopulation, but a mistake by the Irish by putting all their eggs into one basket, which led to famine. Um, my last, uh, or his last claim, was consequences of decreased food security, which includes food scarcity, will cause sickness and disease. It may sound familiar because he pretty much stated in his first claim, and his third claim is pretty much backing up his first claim, and not his main claim that he made. Um, you know, like I said, uh, he said sickness and disease, or I said sickness and disease, like stated in the first secondary claim, will occur due to the decreased food uh, and overpopulation. Yes, my opponent did talk about disease and sickness in more detail in the secondary claim, but failed to give the reasoning why the, the result of further human overpopulation will result in decreased food security. In conclusion, the result of further human overpopulation will not result in decreased food uh, security due to the fact that we as a world have proven in the past that we can manage and the fact that we have new technology to survive um, 
goes against what um, Andre said. So, thank you. All right, structural stuff is fine at the beginning. On the first point, uh, you kind of accept this idea that exponential growth is going to happen, and then just a couple of minutes later, you're denying that by saying, you know, we had half of what was projected at one point, so maybe it's not going to happen. I th I'm not exactly sure why you, you take the position at the beginning that this is, uh, this is true, and then say, well, actually, it's not true because we had, you know, smaller population growths than were uh, anticipated. Uh, the idea that uh, the population population growth that we did have was a partially a result of increased food production seems to suggest that in fact uh, food production drives the population more than the population drives uh, a decreased availability of food which is the premise of the advocates argument and I think that uh, that's that's a point that needs to be emphasized a little bit more is the relationship between those two on the second point I thought you did a good job talking about the example that the um, advocates cited when they, uh, you know, it's the causality on the potato blight is vastly different than a, a population issue. I don't know what the situation on the China famine was. Uh, there's not really any ex expanded explanation of that example either from the advocate or from you, but I thought that you did the right thing in responding to this particular point. You had some evidence that uh, applied to that issue as well. The third point seems to be kind of going around in circles, and I'm not exactly sure that it advances the claim any more than what you had on the first and the second point. All right, thank you all for your patience and sticking around.